Really quick, I'm gonna show Dalton. Um, right hand, right hand. Right. I'm going to show Dalton what we do when we bring somebody in day one who's never had any training. Whether they've had training or not, we're going to start with the basics and show them how we want them to stand, where we want them to put their hand, and what kind of uh, technique we're going to use depending on the situation. So, see, he already know how to stand. See how you stand? You put that foot forward. The mistake a lot of people make is when they're, when they're uh, doing self-defense or they get into their fight stance, they're right-handed and they end up doing this. It's so strong. They got the elbow high and they got the strong side four. Why do they have the strong side four? Because they right hand, they want, they want to hit hard. Now, let's say, for example, switch your feet. Face me, face me. Put your right foot forward. You're right handed, right? So put both hands up. Now take this hand and open and put it on my chest. Open it up like that, boom. So now what happens is, if you're in your fight stance and you're taking your strong side, putting it forward like he has here, and you get engaged into a fight or you're defending yourself, and let's say you have a jacket on, somebody grabs your jacket and somebody grabs you, he's left to hit me with his what? His weak hand or his non-dominant side, okay? So if he switches his stance, Put that hand out. So now, keep that hand up. So now, if, if this arm gets tussled up or someone's grabbing his wrist or his sleeve and he can't get it free, he's left to hit with his what? His dominant side or his strong hand, okay? So it's very important, whenever you're in your fight stance, that you have your non-dominant side forward, your dominant side back, and both hands up. So I'm gonna have you put your left foot forward, both hands up. And the knees need to be slightly bent. Why do the knees need to be slightly bent? So you can move. So you can move, you don't wanna move. You don't wanna be locked out right here. You won't be able to move, and if somebody kicks your leg right here, they can break your leg, so you wanna keep your knees bent. So hands up. Now, what do most people do when they get their fight stance? What do they do with their hands? They ball them up, they ready to start swinging. The problem with this is, if your hands are tight like this, it's gonna slow you down, and you won't be able to move as much. So you actually wanna have your hands open. Doesn't mean that you have to have them open, but it helps, because my hands are open, and somebody comes and they take me out, I can push them, I can grab them, I can push them back, I can put them to the side. If my hands are closed, I can't do that. All I can really do is punch, all right? So my hands are open. When do they become a fist if I'm striking? Right before him impact, yes sir. So I'm here, bang. Now, can I can I strike with my hands open? Yes. yes. You better believe it. Where's that top hat at? Come on up here, Coach DJ. <laughs> So we just got done doing a self-protection class this morning, and a lot of times when someone's training in self-defense, um, they want to do the fancy stuff where they're throwing punches. The bad thing about that is, let's say for example you punch at someone and the person ducks and there's a wall behind them, you can break your wrist or knuckles on the wall versus having an open palm strike or a hammer fist. So now, if I strike here with my open palm strike, I'm not striking like this with my hand closed, I'm actually opening my hand and I'm striking through my target. So if I strike through my target, Think about it like this. If I'm defending myself, but this guy came in and he slapped my wife on the bottom, grabbed me by the neck, got disrespectful, something crazy. Cause I don't go around looking for fights, but if something crazy happened, now I gotta defend myself to not my wife will cuss me out when we get home. So I gotta do something, right? So, <laughs> from here, if I really want to make my first strike effective, before I, I'm just kidding. But if I wanna make it effective, I don't need just need to strike the target, I need to go through the target. So for example, instead of just hitting this pad, I'm thinking about me hitting this board, which means I need to do what? Go through, I need to go through. So I'm going through it with an open palm strike. Now, the advantage of striking like that is, if I punch with my fist like that, and that's the side of someone's head, what can happen? I can break my knuckles, I can break my wrist, I can, I can uh, injure myself a lot. So you have an advantage to open using a palm strike or using what we call a hammer fist when you're striking down like that, all right? Another thing that you can do that's very uh, effective close range with someone, if I'm this close to somebody, what most people would do without proper training, and someone's in the face, what's up, man? You ain't gonna do nothing, what's up, man? You gonna do they end up doing this. Instead, I can just do what, though? It's a head button, my man. <laughs> so from right here, I can do what? Elbow, get back, and then come across with a strike. I'm gonna have you do all that, you ready? No. All right. <laughs> all right, so, first thing I'm gonna have you do is have your feet side by side, hands by your side. The reason I have you start out like this, because in a real life situation, you don't walk around all day long in a fight stance like that. You're gonna look crazy, number one. And number two, somebody's gonna try to fight you. So, he's just standing there chilling, all right? About to get a girl's phone number, whatever he does, I don't know what yeah. he does with his time. No, no. So now, when I walk towards him, this is what I want you to do. Remind me your name again? Dalton. Dalton. What Dalton's gonna do, he's gonna drop back his dominant leg right, right here, and he's gonna blade his body. That's all I want you to do, all right? When I walk towards you, you're just gonna blade your body, all right? All right. 
mad at Tip today. <laughs> <laughs> so he got one foot back. So now that gives him that gives him better what? Leverage. Balance. Balance. Put your feet back together. All right. Now spread the feet apart again. Better balance, right? Yeah, All right. Bit. A little bit. All right. So now this time what I want you to do is when I walk towards you, you're gonna drop one foot back, put your hand out towards my chest, and have one hand up like this. Yeah, Left hand out, right hand up like this. Right. The reason we're doing this, because somebody could, uh, DJ, walk towards me. Keep walking, no matter what I say, keep walking. Stop, man, stop. Stop, stop, man, stop. Some people can't hear, some people don't speak English. So if I'm telling him to stop and he's not stopping, now I walk towards me, DJ. Man, stop, stop, dog, stop, where you going? Stop, man, back up. So now, he knows, physically, he needs to stop moving. This is the last chance that he gets before I gotta go all in, all right? So now, if he backs up, if he backs up, I don't go hit him, he's backing up, he's doing what I want him to do. If he ignores his hand, if he's coming forward, push my hand down. Game time, all right? So, when I walk towards you, sir, keep your hand by your side. When I walk towards you, that one foot goes back, your palm goes out, your hand goes up. Ready? Good, keep it like that, keep it like that. Good, good. So now, we call this technique, we call this the spear position. Stay like that, don't move. The reason we call it the spear position, looks like I'm what? Oh, so it's like I'm throwing a spear. Or this hand is a spear because I'm keeping the person back. Again, if I just do a normal fight stance, have your hands up like this. Don't move, no, go back, just stay right there. Look how close I can get to him. So if he has that hand out, we have what's called a reactionary gap. There's a gap that he has more time to process the information of me swinging, me grabbing, me going to get something, he has time to react versus me getting really close to him. So now what I want you to do, brother, from there, feet back together, hands by your side. This time, I'm gonna add something to it. When I walk towards you, you're gonna step back, spear, and you're gonna have this hand up just like this. Then, we're gonna do, uh, when we do our security training, we do drills that are called shoot, don't shoot. This is gonna be hit, don't hit. Which means, if I keep aggressive towards you, you can hit. Don't hit me, I'm gonna have you hit back. If I back <laughs> up, you don't, do, you don't do anything because there's no need to hit me, all right? Why don't you put me in this position? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, this is crazy. All right, so we're gonna go through the slow, all right? Keep together, hands by your side. So when I walk towards him, he's gonna drop his hands back, he's gonna spear. If I walk away from his spear and just walk back, he doesn't need to do anything, but just make sure me, uh, none of my homeboys is about to jump him, he's good. But if he puts that hand out, and I knock his arm down, he needs to do something to defend himself. So the last thing you want somebody to do when they're trying to intimidate you is let them keep coming, invading your territory, and getting into your space and not doing anything, all right? That's why we encourage them to train so much so you can build that confidence. But anyway, we're gonna go through it slow, I promise. Ready? All right. Ready to spin? Good, now from right here, as soon as I take your arm and I push it down, I want you to take your elbow and strike. The way we effectively do an elbow strike, the elbow's the hardest, sharpest point in your body. In order for that elbow to be effective, he's gonna point his thumb down. When he points his thumb down, now that elbow is standing out, protruding, is ready to strike. If he doesn't point his thumb down, his thumb's like this, he's probably gonna hit with his forearm. You point your thumb down, the elbow points out, and you're gonna strike right here. Yes, sir. But make sure when you strike, this hand comes back to your face. Yep, yep, do, do it slow. You ready? Let's see if I have some homeboys back here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. Spear. Oh, good. Do that again, but when you do it, strike. I want this hand protecting your face. And keep in mind, everybody watch this, please. If you do, I want you to take your right foot and do this. Rotate. Torque. Right there. Hold it right there. Right there. Now, keep in mind, if I'm close enough for him to hit me with the elbow, he's close enough for me to, for me to do what? Hit him with the elbow, which means he needs to take his hand, open your hand, sir. Protect your face like that. So now he's striking and he's blocking at the same time. So what it looks like when we throw a punch, it looks like this. When we throw an elbow, it looks like this or like this. Because I'm striking and I'm blocking at the same time. I'm not doing this. Why? Can't see. Can't see. I want to be able to see what I'm doing, all right? All right, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Put your hand up. Elbow in. Just like that. You text my wife? Nah. <laughs> 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 Y'all give a hand. Good job. Good job.